Go ahead. Hey, everyone. It's Joe. It is A.S. from the Automator. And uh, during yesterday's hero call, uh, a hero member was talking about creating flags, using flags. And during the call, Isaiah went on for, what, like 25, 30 minutes on, on everything with it, which was really awesome. But I had found this V1 script for automating, creating flags. And I said, hey, you know, we, we didn't get to it in the call, but I thought, hey, let's convert this to V2. And then right. I said, explain it to me what it's actually doing here. And so I figured I'm going to hit record here and Isaiah will explain it to us here. So. Right. We usually don't like talking about this kind of things in the Saturday class because it's a little bit advanced. But oh, once you but, yeah, but once you get the idea of what is happening, it's, concept it's not, is easy. The concept is easy. The 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 idea itself, why to use it and so on, it's a little bit advanced. So basically, we're gonna loop 10 times in this case. We're gonna store the flags in a in an array in this instance. Um, we're gonna go ahead and start here. Now at this point, we're grabbing the index, subtracting one from it. So we're going to have zero right now. And from zero, we're going to shift the bytes. We're going to shift one byte to the left. Ah. This is the part that is confusing to people who has never worked with bi binary. So zero right here, the index one minus one is zero. It looks like this in binary, all right? So we have eight bits, everything zero, that's a zero. When we shift one to the left, you will get a one in the ending port because you just shifted everything to the left with a one. Okay, fine. That would end up with this number in binary, which means now that our flag is a number one. That's because in binary, the flag is one. We go ahead and start with that. That's our first. Now, we're going to loop again, but remember, now our index is going to start at, one, at 2, minus 1 is 1, so we're going to start up with this number. When we shift to the left, that one number shifts to the left. That's exactly what it does. So it is literally shifting the byte to the left. If it was here, it would be here. Now, this is binary numbers, so the next power right now is a, the number 2 two is a power of two. So when I go back here, that binary number represents number two. That's what is going to happen. Okay, we continue with the process. I'm not going to explain too much. But now what should have happened is I actually did it twice. One, one. So we should be here. And instead of two, the next one was four. The next one should be Eight. That's what is going to happen here. I think we are here. We're going to shift it one more. So let me see where we were. We were at four. And this is what four looks like in binary. Because if we shift it from two, one power of two there, it would be four. We're going to do the same shifting. But here, what will happen is if I have a one in here, what I have is an eight. That's what is going to happen on the next front. So as you can see, it goes on powers of two. And every time I'm moving the one that way, the numbers, the digits change, but they don't change by one. They change by powers of two. So at this point, I would have 16. Then at this point, I will have 32. And now I would have 64. And finally, I would have 124, I guess, or 128, I guess. So. That's what's going on. You're shifting the bytes to the left as you go. And I could continue doing that for each number. And the amount of, uh, when, when, when I finish here, let me just stop after it finishes. Now I do have a group of flags. You see, 128, 256, 512. That's basically what it's doing. It's creating numbers in a very specific pattern that later on we can use as flags in our script. That's the part that I'm not going to dive into. Flags are very useful. And that's what I explained yesterday in the call, in the hero call, how we can use flags, why they're useful. But this is a very simple way of creating flags. You don't have to manually do them yourself, even though in most programming languages, we definitely see a file with all the flags already created. Um, with different names, because that's the point. You you name your flags, 
in a way that makes sense to your program. And later on, you just check if those things are true or if they're joined or if they're mixed. Um, and that's it. Later after that, you get a message box showing each of the flags. And as you can see, it's just power soft too. That's what you're getting there. Converting this to V2 is very simple. We don't need to do too much because we do have arrays in V2. We do have loops. So I just have to remove the percent signs. Um, this will work the same. This will work the same. And uh, for indexing flagging flags, that works basically the same. I, If I want, I don't need to get that. I just need the flag. And now I just convert the message box to a string. I don't need the I don't need the good the um, things here. A index. I can have a index here. I don't need the percent signs. Is what I'm trying to say. And that's it. And let's switch this to v2. Now let's remove this from there. And this code should behave exactly the same as the other one. It's basically the same code, uh, except for this one. Why? So I cannot. Oh, <laughs> in V1, uh, well, in V2, if the array is empty, you cannot refer to an index that does not exist yet. So what you should do is instead push. You just have to push the flags and that will create the index, but you literally cannot refer to an index that doesn't exist in an array for some reason. I was saying, yes, I, I tried convert. I'm like, man, I thought I understood what to change and it was erroring. And I'm like, all right, I don't know. No, yeah, yeah, yeah. So basically I cannot, I cannot just refer to number three if it's not there yet. So okay. if, if it is an empty array, then just push the values. And now it will continue pushing as is. And then later on you can refer to them in here now we have the flags i will get a flag for each of them there we go and now the the other one which to me is the same i'd say is let's change line 14 to just shove them into a variable and then just display it once because why do we need you know, yeah exactly so it would be like um i, I would well i would have left all that just changed the beginning part flags uh well no i was gonna say like be flags dot equals and then message box and I have to put a new line in here and then just message box. Yeah, but oh you want also the index? Right. Okay, okay. Yeah, yeah sure. Just leave it all just like it was. I mean it's a good demonstration, right? right. It was just I don't need to see it on each step. Right. So Before now when I let it go this is what yeah. I get. The first index, I get the one, two, four, eight. That's it. Uh, it's basically um, a step um, a, uh, on on a power of two. That's it. And then, well, in binary, by the way, <laughs> because this is not a power of two if you're looking at decimal numbers, right? That's the only thing. <laughs> but there you go. So in any case, I hope that helps. Again, the... The usefulness of the flags, I cannot explain it right now it took quite a while. because it's too big. But yeah, it's, it's a very big topic, but this is how you can create flags. A simple easy. example of the uses of them. It's not the one that you covered yesterday, which was much more advanced. Uh, but just when you look at a message box, the different icons and how you choose the numbers, that's how the numbers were created. Is there's no way to combine them different, you know, to, to come yeah. up with the number, the sum of them. Yeah, and it's a, it, it still doesn't get into the coolness of what you're doing, right? but it's a, a quick example of, of the I use. Was, I was showing how they were using for different oh. things. This is for the buttons. This is for the icons. This is for making a default button. This is a modality. And then you can combine but, them together. That's but where the flags come wrong. In V2 now, you can use the name. Is that right? The names, yes. That's right. Yeah. You can use a, a string I instead of... Thought. That's almost like the flag. I mean, it's, you know, the example you were doing yesterday, you were showing how I don't have to remember the number. I can use the word. Right, exactly. <laughs> that right. is right. Yeah, that, that that's awesome. Right. Now, the, the main usefulness of it is when you join this. That's where we're, 
where they act as flags when you join the yes and no with an icon question, the question icon. When you join these two guys, that's where these two numbers are getting joined in flags. That's why when when that happens, the way how they created these flags and the way how we're explaining this one here, it's a small dif- there's a small difference between them, but they are acting the same way. They're flags. So if this kind of stuff interests you, we've we've been doing, and I should look it up, but we've been having hero calls for, what, a year and a half now? Every Friday and Saturday, um, it's three hours a week where we help people level up, right? They come in with their questions, and if not, we just talk, teach, you know, a little example stuff. So check it out. It's people at all skill levels. It's a great um, program opportunity. Good day. Cheers.